I'm going to be ranking the most annoying Resident Evil characters that have appeared in the games, but we're also going to be including characters that appeared in the CGI movies for Resident Evil. But in any case, let's get started with the video. All right, so the first character we're essentially going to be looking at is Alfred Ashford. And yeah, a really annoying character. Now, if you guys haven't played Resident Evil Code Veronica without spoiling too much, he's got a really annoying voice. Um, the fact that he always literally runs away after, you know, an encounter and he starts giggling like a little girl is <laughs> super annoying. So for that reason, you know what, I got to put him up in the S and the S tier of the super annoying category, just because he's the type of guy that'll basically wait for you to basically turn your back and then he'll shoot. He's very cowardly and uh, he's just super annoying, man. Like he just, <laughs> that little laugh that he does. <laughs> is so annoying and the fact that he just runs away he doesn't stick to fight i think that basically warrants him in the super annoying category next up talking about super annoying we're actually talking about ashley now it is worth noting that you know what there's two versions of ashley now especially with the release of resident evil 4 remake a couple of months ago now if we're talking about that ashley i don't think that ashley was annoying at all i actually thought that they did a fantastic job with uh ashley and resident evil 4 remake you know if anything that ashley was more down to earth she looked like she honestly looked like a the type of person that you'd honestly want to hang out with but this ashley oh my gosh this ashley was so annoying every time i think of this ashley i'm always reminded of that scene in particular where leon is basically asking her after she's coughing in the castle hey are you okay and she gets all upset and she's like leave me alone as she starts running it's just such like a whiny kind of brat entitled kind of a person and to be honest yeah she's so annoying you all right i'm fine just leave me alone ashley wait <gasps> For that reason, I would actually put her up here. Now, I don't know which one to go, you know, whether this one goes first or that one. They're both pretty annoying. But at, right now, at this state, I'll just leave them like this. So next up is Brad. Oh my gosh. Now, as many of you guys know, if you guys have been a longtime subscriber, you guys know that I am not a fan of Brad Vickers. He's so annoying. Chicken heart Vickers. Now, one could argue that, you know, Brad kind of did everybody a service since, you know, if the stars members weren't left in the mansion, you know, they wouldn't have covered all the secrets that Umbrella was doing. We wouldn't have had Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. Things would have been a lot differently. They probably would have occurred, but that's not what we're really talking about. We're not talking about what if. We're just talking about annoying characters here. And that's really just, that's just honestly not the best thing you want in a partner is somebody that just leaves you to die. You know, one of the things that they took out in Resident Evil 3 Remake, they took out a bunch of stuff, but one of the things that they took out was him dying you know, by Nemesis. You know what I mean? They made it, they basically made you kill Brad as Carlos rather than Nemesis literally impaling him, which I honestly loved when I first played Resident Evil 3 Nemesis because I can't stand this character. This character is so annoying. Now, I wouldn't say he's the most annoying, right? That kind of just comes to my personal taste, but I would honestly kind of put him either in the pretty annoying just for that, just, just for being just such a coward and leaving all of his stars members. So I think think you know what I'm gonna put him in pretty annoying I might change him I put him in kind of annoying but we'll see we'll see what one you know later on we'll kind of just fix everybody now next up we actually have Claire now it is worth mentioning that specifically here we're talking about Claire from Revelations 2 which is a very different Claire than the one we actually had from the OG Resident Evil 2 Resident Evil Code Veronica or the newer Claire that we have you know with um, with Stephanie Panicello which I think she's done a phenomenal job with um, you know in RE2 remake Resident Evil Infinite Darkness and Resident Evil Death Island. She's done a phenomenal job of portraying Claire. And this Claire is very different from all of those. You know, this Claire, I thought she was the least like Claire. And one of the scenes that comes to mind to kind of prove my point here is that scene in particular in Revelations 2, when you encounter Natalia with, uh, and you're with Moira as well. Wait, it's okay. Don't be scared. What's your name? Where are you from? <sighs> Did that lady put you here? Where are Whoa, you? Whoa, down, Claire. Let me talk to her. You must be so scared. I know I am. My name's Moira. See? We're like sisters. Everything's okay now. What's your friend's name? 
Wadi. You're both so brave. You're pretty good with kids. Come on. Okay. That scene right there kind of just, you know, demonstrated that this was not the Claire that we knew. This is a different Claire altogether. And I thought that Revelations 2 did a poor job at this, mostly because Claire has always been really good with children. You know, we saw that with Re with Resident Evil 2, you know, Resident Evil 2 remake. And to see her act so awkward with another little kid in a very similar situation in Revelations 2 was super, it, it was just really disappointing. And if anything, she was just kind of interrogating the little girl. She wasn't giving her space. And if anything, Mora was the one that kind of went in there and kind of said, hey, relax, dude, you're talking to a kid. That scene shouldn't have happened. Now, I don't think she was super annoying. That was like the only scene in Revelations that I thought was just really weird. It was really awkward. I didn't really like it. And I wasn't the biggest fan of this Claire. But would I say that she's annoying at the end of the day? Probably not. I don't think she's that annoying. I just think that that scene was kind of annoying to me as a as a as a gamer, as a viewer, or as a fan. As a Resident Evil fan is the best way to put it. I thought that was annoying. But is her character annoying? I'd probably say no, no. So yeah, for Claire for Revelations 2, I would honestly say she's not annoying. Next up, we actually have Derek Simmons. Now again, if you guys have been you know with the channel, you guys know that I've mentioned Simmons a lot. He is such an annoying boss you know he is so annoying the man literally has like how many like six or five i don't know you know it's been a while since i played resident evil 6 but oh my gosh he has so many transformations you know he's got like he turns into a fly in one of them he turns into a lion he turns into a, a freaking dinosaur in one of them and he's just so annoying. I don't think he was a great villain at all. I thought he was very poorly written. I didn't really like that he was the final boss either. He's kind of a scrawny guy, and then he turns into a muscular kind of version that transforms into all these monsters. And his just his boss fight was super annoying. Now it is worth mentioning that we're not really, you know, this is we are talking about the characters here, but you know what? It is worth noting that sometimes, you know, we are going to be kind of referencing gameplay mechanics for the characters. And for Derek Simmons, I think that that's mostly where his where he's the most annoying. Um, other than that, I don't think he's that great of a villain at all. I don't. I think he's pretty mid. So for that, for those reasons, you know what I mean. I think he's super annoying when you're playing against him, and also his his whole character too. Uh, is kind of annoying too. You know what I mean? He's kind of a creep. The fact that he kind of cloned Ada, uh, he made his wife literally become Ada because he had a crush on Ada was also just really weird. And <laughs> I, to this day, I don't get why that was the case. You know, who, who wrote that into the story? So that is kind of annoying. So you know what, with all of that mentioned, I think, I don't think he's in the super annoying phase. If we're talking about just his gameplay mechanics, I would put him up here. So I'm just gonna put him here pretty annoying. You know what I mean? I don't think he's as annoying as as Brad. Maybe he is actually. You know, you know what? You know what? Now that I think about it, I think he might be a little more annoying than Brad. Just because it's like, what's that guy doing there? He, you know, even his whole outfit is super weird. You know, I I don't know. I I'm not wasn't the biggest fan of Derek Simmons there. Next up, we actually have a character that's specifically from the first CGI Resident Evil movie, Resident Evil uh, Degeneration, and uh, his character's name is Greg Glenn. Now, this character is actually voiced by Steve Blum, who you know has portrayed several characters. I really I really like uh, Steve Blum's voice acting. He's played a lot of great characters. But when it comes to this character, this character was just written really dumb. He was one of the stupidest characters in Resident Evil Degeneration. He got himself infected. Or no, he didn't get himself infected at the at the start, but he was really dumb. He started shooting a bunch of zombies. He started <laughs> started acting super obnoxious. Um, you know, shooting a bunch of zombies, even though Leon told him, like, calm down. And he's like, no, don't tell me to calm down. He just starts mowing down a bunch of zombies in that movie. You know, he wasn't taking instructions very well and that did cost him getting infected later on so for those reasons he is really annoying you know the fact that he doesn't take any <laughs> any uh any uh advice right from leon i would say he is pretty annoying you know he did deserve to die <laughs> I was like, this guy needs to die. That's how much of that. That's how annoying he is. So I would say he is pretty annoying. Next up, we actually have a character from uh, whatchamacallit. We have a character from Revelations whose code name is actually Jackass. 
but his official, his real name is uh, Quint Ketchum, I think. I'm pretty sure that's his name. Very strange name. Makes me think of like uh, Ash Ketchum. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Quint was just a very silly character. You know what I mean? Like even him and his buddy actually will 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 uh, will rank both of them at the same time, uh, just to kill two birds with one stone. But yeah, these characters were such a weird part of the Revelation game. You know, I really like Revelations. I thought Revelations was a fantastic game. Every time I think about Revelations, I always think, whoa, how did this game come out on the 3DS? The cinematics are really great. You know, the overall gameplay is is decent enough to play even on like on modern consoles. So. But this section of the game, when you play, when you play as both Quint and as uh, as well as uh, oh, I think his name is Keith, Keith, uh, and his code name is Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> with code names like that, you know that these characters are going to be really annoying. So um, yeah, they didn't really add anything. They're kind of just dumb and dumber of the of the Resident Evil franchise. I was just not a fan of them. I don't think they made me laugh. But I wouldn't say that I laughed at their jokes. If anything, I kind of laughed at them because they were just so dumb. So do I think that they're the most uh, obnoxious out of everybody? I, you know what? I do think they're super annoying. So you know what? I think I might put them in the A tier. Probably not as annoying as Ashley. Maybe, maybe Ashley. You know what? Maybe I, yeah. Maybe Ashley, I don't know, man. But Ashley can be super annoying as well. I don't know. You know what? They're kind of on the same level for me of how annoying they are. And you know what? I think I might even put, I might even have him, I might put uh, Alfred a little lower, to be honest. We might have to <laughs> rearrange that. But yeah, they're so annoying. Um, now that I'm just thinking about it, when you're playing as missions to Revelations, yeah, they were really like if they, if their section of the game was cut out of Revelations, I think I would have liked Revelations even more because they they were just completely unnecessary. To this day, I don't understand what the devs were thinking by adding these. If anything, it almost looked like their characters were made for like children. But like, how many children are playing Resident Evil? You know what I mean? So why would you? It, it was just weird. It was just weird. It, it almost looked like a kids' television host, kind of annoying. So. <laughs> Yeah, super annoying. All right, so next up, we actually have JD from Resident Evil Damnation. Now, this was a character that was, again, very weird that they added this character. I don't think he was the most annoying character, but I do think that he was somewhat annoying. So for that reason, you know what? I think I'm going to put him in the kind of annoying, you know? At times, he was acting... I think, he was, if anything, he was just kind of just more stupid. But again, that is a little bit annoying, you know, watching Resident Evil Damnation. But the difference with him and the characters like, for example, Quint and Keith is the fact that you know JD at the end of Resident Evil Damnation and right before he turns into a, a zombie I kind of just felt a little bad you know that he died if anything he was just a, a dumb guy that got himself into uh, into a bad situation so yeah I don't think he's as annoying as these two up here so for that reason I think kind of annoying for him all right next up we actually have Mia Winters now it is worth mentioning that you know Mia I, I will say, and, and this is not just me, but I've also heard this from a lot of other people, Resident Evil fans, they really did not like the, the ship aspect of Resident Evil 7. And I am one of those fans that, I, you know, if you guys have followed this channel, you guys are well aware the uh, my thoughts on Resident Evil 7. I'm not the biggest fan of RE7. But, you know, I wouldn't say her character is super annoying. If anything, I just thought that the reason I put her just on this list is mostly because that ship aspect of the game, which I thought was really annoying. You know, I would have just liked to have played played as Ethan throughout the whole game, but it's worth mentioning that, you know, Mia's character is not really nice, you know, especially the fact that, you know, she was working undercover with like a terrorist organization. She was doing all of that while being married to Ethan. So again, this is, we are strictly talking about annoying characters, but I don't think she's annoying. I think she's just not a nice person. But uh, yeah, you know, what? I'll put her in the not annoying section. All right, next up, we actually have Mora Burton from Revelations too. Now, I do have to mention that I actually really like Moira Burton's character from Revelations 2, but the reason she's on this list is mostly due to her annoying kind of attitude towards her dad. That's something that I didn't really like. Obviously, I like her character. I like her growth. That's something that I should specify. Um, I like, you know, the growth that you see from the beginning of Revelations 2 all the way to the end. The other annoying aspect that I found of her uh, about her character was the fact that she doesn't, sh you know, she doesn't shoot guns, which 
which is super funny coming from, you know, a, the daughter of Barry who is like in love with guns. You know, he, <laughs> I'm sure if you went to Barry's house, you would just find, you know, a whole garage filled with locked boxes of weapons, you know? <laughs> so it is funny. And again, I do like that about her character. I like her growth, but you know, throughout the, you know, at the, at the start of Revelations 2, I thought she was super annoying. You know, her attitude towards, no, I'm not going to shoot. Okay. My dad's an idiot and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, bro, like, just, just <laughs> shut your face, Mora. Shut your face and just help out here. You know what I mean? She's like, I'm going to, me uh, you know, use me melee weapons and just start hitting people. And it's like, all right, all right. <laughs> but it is worth mentioning that I do like her character, right? I stated that. The reason I like her character is because as she progresses through the story near the end, you know, she kind of smartens up. She kind of grows up. She kind of matures and basically, you know, starts to use a gun. So for that reason, I would say that Mora, she at the start of Revelations 2, she's super annoying, but near the end of it, I actually think that she probably belongs in the kind of annoying. Just because obviously she had her no gun policy, and it's like, dude, I don't think you should have those policies when bad stuff is happening. You know, we're basically in another incident. And uh, <laughs> and just her, you know, her hatred towards her dad. And you know what? It is understandable, but I did notice that, you know, she was coming off as really kind of whiny, very similar to Ashley. Again, I would actually put her next to Ashley at the start of Revelations 2, but by the end of it, I think she belongs in the kind of annoying. But I honestly really like her character, so don't get me wrong here. Next up, we actually have Nikolai uh, Genovaif. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but Nikolai is a very interesting character because in the OG Resident Evil 3, I thought he was very similar to Alfred. Uh, you know, every time you would find him, he kind of runs away and he never dies in the OG. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he doesn't die. There's a grenade explosion. He disappears, uh, stuff like that. You know, there's several instances where Nikolai just keeps coming back. You know, you think he's dead or you think he's long gone, but no, he's still there. And so, but I think the remake, remake Resident Evil 3 Nikolai was a little bit different. I think he was more in line with, um, with Alfred, but he didn't have Alfred's annoying laugh. But I do think that they're very similar in the fact that every time you encounter them, they're always at the, like, the, the best spot. They, they go there, they make fun of you, and then they, they leave. You know, both of those characters are very similar. And to be honest, I think, you know what? I kind of want to put him... <sighs> Maybe over here, yeah, in the pretty annoying, but I think they're very similar. So I might actually move Alfred right here, just because Alfred, I think is just a little more annoying just because of his laugh, <laughs> but uh, his little girl laugh, but he runs away. But Nikolai, again, if we're looking at Resident Evil 3 remakes, Nikolai and Resident Evil the OG, they're, you know, they're both, they're both still annoying, but, uh, but this Nikolai, um, yeah, I think I would put him there just because he's always at the right spot, the right time, and then he just runs away. You know, you don't really fight him until the end. And so, <laughs> and it's not really a fight. So, yeah. All right, next up, we actually have, uh, what's his name? Ricardo Irving. He's got such a strange name from uh, from Africa, right? I'm pretty sure his lore says that he's from Africa, but he doesn't sound African. He's got like a weird East Coast kind of an accent from the US, but I don't know. I have to, I have to dive deeper into his lore. You know, I have to look at those files again from Resident Evil five but uh this character was just really weird it almost looked like they didn't put too much thought into this this character for resident Evil five you know from the get-go you could just know that this guy was gonna die uh just because he doesn't really have that many lines uh <laughs> he does it like right from the, the get-go you know i don't think he's the most the super annoying but he does have an annoying voice so i would say he's kind of annoying i think he's obviously more annoying than jd and mora but yeah i'd say he's kind of kind of annoying you know what i mean <laughs> kind of just a little kind of yeah so uh i think that's where we'll put uh ricardo irving just because he does have a really obnoxious uh laugh really obnoxious kind of uh, way of speaking so we'll put him there we'll put ricardo irving and, and just at the end of the day his character was really useless it wasn't really he was just another mini boss essentially for resident evil 5. now next up we actually have ramon salazar from uh resident evil 4. um specifically we actually have ramon salazar from the og re4 so it is worth mentioning that I actually really like this character, especially with what um, the new uh, the new Resident Evil 4 remake did with the character. I thought, you know, his Spanish accent was amazing. I also thought the OG RE4 Spanish accent was great, um, but his was more from Latin America. Yeah, I wouldn't say his character is that annoying. I think the only annoying attributes of this character is that he does laugh like a little girl. Uh, very similar, <laughs> not like a little girl, but not. it's not as bad as... Uh, 
as Alfred here, but he is annoying. He does have an annoying laugh. It's a very kind of a giggle. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> If anything, that just makes, makes the character just uh, kind of just funny. I don't think he's that annoying. If anything, I kinda, I'm kind of just curious to put him either in the not annoying or the kind of annoying, just because some of his jokes and stuff, right, or, or just the stuff that he says can be kind of annoying in the OG. But yeah, you know what? I think this character, I, I very much like in the same sense as Mora, just a little annoying, but not anything that kind of detracts from me liking the character. So for those reasons, I'm going to put him in the kind of annoying, but it's just, just from his tone of voice, the way he laughs, the way he just runs away. Like for example, that whole trap, it makes me, I, every time every time I think of Ramon, I always think of that little trap that he has in the OG RE4, where he's like just hiding in a room and then Leon shows up. And then what's funny is, is that he just runs away like a little gnome and uh, <laughs> he starts laughing like a little kid while just running away. And, uh, you know, the whole um, ceiling kind of drops with spikes. So, again, those are just little annoying moments that it's like, bro, seriously? But, again, it's not enough to detract from the actual character. <laughs> Next up, we actually have uh, Senator Ron Davies, I believe is his name. I think that's his name. I might have to double check that. But uh, yeah, Senator Ron Davies from Resident Evil Degeneration. This guy was very annoying from in, in, while watching Resident Evil Degeneration. Like, I wouldn't say he was the most annoying. I just thought that he was just an annoying part of the, of, of the movie. But again, that was kind of his character. That was why he was there. He was just super annoying. <laughs> if anything, one of the scenes that comes to mind with Senator Davies in Resident Evil Degeneration is that scene where he kind of pushes that little girl. I forgot the little girl's name from Resident Evil Degeneration, but he kind of pu pushes her and starts gunning for the exit. That was super annoying. His whole just character where he's just like, I, I don't know. He I don't think he's the most annoying guy in Resident Evil, but he is not nice, definitely. So I would honestly put him in the pretty annoying kind of a thing. I'd probably put him either, you know, with Brad Vickers. I think he's a little less annoying than Brad Vickers, if I'm being honest, because I just really don't like Brad Vickers. But <laughs> you know what? I think at the tail end of pretty annoying is probably the best place for him. Because again, he's, he did that last thing where he's trying to escape and he kind of just pushes that little girl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's just an overall just obnoxious character in Resident Evil Degeneration, so I'll put him there. All right, next up, we actually have Sheva. Sheva, now, the reason she's on this list is because I've heard so many Resident Evil fans online talk about how they don't like Sheva, and of course, I've also heard other RE fans that have really liked Sheva. Personally, I think Sheva is a very underrated character, and I think the majority of people, uh, the reason they find her very annoying is mostly because of her gameplay mechanic, not really her character. You know, her character, I've stated this on the channel, I think her backstory is super, super great. If anything, I would love to have another game where Sheva appears, but uh, I think the only annoying part of Sheva, like her character, not her gameplay, because we all know if you've played Resident Evil 5, you know, uh, you're playing by yourself, especially on higher difficulties, she'll literally hog all of the green herbs, and when she's supposed to come over there and kind of resuscitate you, if you're in a tight, you know, spot, you know, a bunch of Majinis are coming after you, Sometimes the AI is really dumb where she'll just go up to you and just look at you as you die, as your red thing for the resuscitate goes all the way to zero. That's happened to me a number of times while playing Resident Evil 5 on hardest, harder difficulties by myself. That's one of the reasons why, as mentioned, I think a lot of people find Sheva annoying. But going back to what I was saying, I think the only part of her character that's annoying is the fact that she always loves to say partner. I think that that's her whole MO, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's her whole character in Resident Evil 5. She's always like, but we're partners, right? What was that her partner? You know, but I thought they were partners. That's literally all Sheva is always saying. Not. That's why I'm your partner. Bruh. Partner. Partners. Bruh. I'm sure. Us. We are partners. Bruh. To the end. What happened to your partner? Bruh. I thought they were partners. Bruh. West. 
So if they do do a remake of Resident Evil 5, I do think they need to give her a lot more lines, make her a little more down to earth. The same thing that they did with Resident Evil 4 remake, you know, with Ashley's case where Ashley was super annoying in the OG. I thought they did a fantastic job with Ashley in the remake. I don't think she's annoying at all, Ashley from the remake. And I would love to see that with Sheva, but just with that, just with that little, little annoying thing with the partners kind of thing. But obviously, I don't think Sheva from Resident Evil 5 is as annoying as Ashley. I don't think she's annoying at all, to be honest. So you know what? I'm going to put her in not annoying. But as mentioned, I think it would be awesome in the remake if they gave her more more character. You know what I mean? Like we got to see her character more. We got to see her background a lot more rather than reading all that stuff in the files. I think it would be awesome if we got a scene where Chris and Sheva kind of grow as partners rather than her always spewing that that phrase throughout the whole game. You know what I mean? But that's the only annoying thing, but I don't think it warrants her being annoying at all. Yeah. But anyways, that's where I'll leave Sheva. Next up, we actually have our final person that we're going to be ranking. And that, of course, is Steve Burnside from Resident Evil Code Veronica. Now, it is worth mentioning that there are two Steves, right? We have Steve from this one, from the OG Resident Evil Code Veronica. We also have Steve from Resident Evil um, The Dark Side Chronicles in the Game of Oblivion section of that game. And to be honest, I actually really liked that Steve from Dark Side Chronicles. If anything, if they do remake Code Veronica, which I'm hoping they do because I love Code Veronica. I hope that uh, <laughs> that they make the character like Dark Side Chronicles a bit more rather than this OG character because this OG character, oh my gosh, he is so annoying. You know what I mean? Now, Steve, it is worth noting that Steve in the game is actually 17, if I'm not mistaken. He's 17 during the events of Resident Evil Code Veronica and oh my gosh, he doesn't act like a 17 year old. He acts like a little like eight year old kid um, getting himself in so many situations. He is just so obnoxious during the whole game he's doing stuff like just shooting you know everywhere <laughs> testing out his guns he's just i don't know his whole accent too the, the person that voice acted steve his accent too like his whole the way he was playing steve was super annoying i think the voice actor was trying to make his voice younger so he kind of gave him kind of a squeak or whatever i don't know he's just yeah help me steve He's just not a great character, super annoying. The fact that he gets upset or he doesn't want to give you like the guns, the fact that he gets himself kind of trapped in that um, that hot room or whatever when when he's when he gets those two um, those two Lugers, the golden Lugers. Uh, scenes like that, it's like, bruh, Steve, you need to calm down. The other thing that I also didn't like about this character was is that the story of Resident Evil, or not, not the story, but I guess the dynamic between Claire Redfield and Steve Burnside was really bad. You know, it almost seemed seemed like every time Steve was being super annoying, super obnoxious, uh, Claire would literally be like, oh, Steve, oh, Steve. And it's like, dude, what? Steve, what were you doing here? Who brought you here and where is your family? Shut up. I don't want to talk about it. Steve. Never mind. Let's get going. Steve is being a little punk right now, all right? <laughs> I don't know, his whole character was super annoying. That whole scene with his dad, his dad dying, him killing his dad, and him just closing his eyes because he didn't want to shoot his dad. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just bad. Um, I think, you know, for those Resident Evil fans that don't like Code Veronica, I think probably that's one of the things that they probably don't like. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not one of those uh, Resident Evil fans. I love Resident Evil Code Veronica, but I think it's safe to say that he's probably the worst part <laughs> of Code Veronica, is that character that voice so for that reason i think steve kind of takes the cake here og steve i think he's <laughs> i think he's either the top but you know what i mean there are some some character traits that i like about steve like the fact that he comes and saves claire <laughs> So that that is that does kind of put him a little better than than Lumley here. So I think I might put Steve right here. 
above Ashley, definitely, but below these guys, you know, Grinder and Jackass, <laughs> or AKA uh, Keith and um, and Quint. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to click this one right here where we actually rank the hottest villains in the Resident Evil franchise. Anyways, thank you so much for watching.